back. G'day, I'm Mark Bass. No, wait, I'm not a Sydney Swans Hall of Famer slash Team of the Century member. I'm Alex Donnelly, and I'm your host for the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things the greatest game in the world, Australian rules footy. Joining me for the midweek madness shows, local nuffs, weirdos, that moustache is doing different things for me. <laughs> it's Leo Mullally over there. That doesn't look great, oh, Leo. Yeah, it doesn't look great. I, I did have to uh, Google who Mark Bays was uh, yeah. just before my oh, time. But, yeah. uh, average 12 disposals. Oh, <laughs> get right. Where did he Mate, play? he'd get a 20-year contract at North Melbourne with that stuff. That's true. That's contract. true. Yeah. yeah that, that, yeah, that he ran, ran off half back, had a great left peg, good delivery to the right. forward line. Oh, he's driving Sheasel here. Yeah. Played about 250 games. He was Harry Sheasel we, before Harry We do Sheasel. like obscure player yeah, references. So I'm going so. obscure. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. fine. I just, I'm just saying I had to Google. Yeah, <laughs> I know. He was born. He, was, he played before you guys were born. And there's the stats guy, Leo. Liam McCallion, not Leo McCallion. Liam McCallion. I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not a Leo. Uh, yeah, very excited. You're yeah, he, he literally did play before us, but... Good on him. He seems like a good player. Team of the century, you said, yeah. so get around him. Exactly. <laughs> if he's watching, yeah. we'll get him, Shout out Let's to get Mark him on. Bays. Let's get him on. See you at the Rising Sun one day, Mark Bays. What a man. <laughs> anyway, today on the Midweek Madness Show, we have a special guest, friend of the show, Big J journalist, Eliza Riley from out west to talk all things flag mental <laughs> and the West Coast Eagles. So we'll get into that in the middle of the show. But yep. before we get going, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Follow AFL Today on all the social medias and get around this wherever you get your podcasts. Please give us a review, leave a comment on those podcasts. The five-star ratings are very, very important because we are absolutely better than the AFL Daily Show produced by the AFL because we are AFL Today. <laughs> okay. But anyway, footy's back. Let's get into the news. Footscrave rebranded. For some, one week, yeah. Some would say that they should do this forever. Uh, yeah, some some would say that. Yeah, yeah. retro around the Western Bulldogs of Footscray this week. I like I it like, for one I week. I do like yeah. it. Yeah, I like yeah. it better than the Western Bulldogs. Western Bulldogs, yeah. Like it's, yeah, no, just Footscray, it's I, great. No, I like Western Bulldogs for some reason, but yeah, mm. I, I, hate I might the be Western Bulldogs. Bulldogs. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I'm all about. You might Footscray. see them at a different team as a different team if they're Footscray. Yeah, I think they were Footscray when they broke my heart when I was six years old. So. Well, they, when they beat you Swans in the granny, they were Western Bulldogs. Yeah. So he, that's why he wants them to be yeah, Footscray. Yeah. yeah, but they were Footscray when they broke a child's heart. He wants them to fold. He wants them to fold. Yeah. I know about that. Like, I mean, the bonds. I've actually different. come around. Like, they were actually slightly enjoyable to watch on the weekend. I don't know what's if happening. If they fold, in my life. is the bond up for grabs? He's always he's, up for, he's, he's out of contract next yeah. year. Oh, he's 100 percent re-signing. So is Trelaw. So is Liver. Liver yeah. and, and got the, the, uh, we'll, yeah, Liver yeah, and the bond absolutely that. love yeah. the dogs. They're not leaving. Anyway. Tyson Stangle passed out in a pub on Saturday night, Sunday night. Oh my god. Sunday morning. This is a weekly occurrence for him. What is he doing? Yeah, that's um I I do enjoy how the media has sort of tiptoed around this one. Compared to one Clayton Oliver. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's Given, true. you know, for Clary for months upon end, it was a complete beat up on Clary. Just and say it was Clary on everything. the weekend. He There would have been every single oh, media outlet covering it. He would it, have yeah. been suspended from playing of some sort. But this is, let's be honest, this is not Tyson Stengel's first indiscretion. No. <laughs> the stats guy was drinking with him during gather round. Uh, maybe not directly not with, with him, him, but he was there. He was there. He he does love a uh, late night. It was after night. the game for... Yeah, he, he wasn't doing anything wrong. He was yeah. just having a drink. But he, I know he does like a late night, uh, Tyson Stengel. Yeah, so... <laughs> It's yeah, it's you know. But hopefully. he needs to be a bit smarter. He, it's like not his first time he's had a big night yeah, and well, gone too fast. Why, so. why got sacked from Adelaide? But yeah, ho- yeah. hopefully all's well with him as well as you know mental health and all that. So hopefully yes. he is okay. But yeah, yep. maybe get off the tins. Yeah, relax. Our man Cheeks, friend of the show, James Robottom. He's back for the Swans yes. this week. Jim's up and about. Yeah, Cheeks, he's back. I love it. <laughs> Someone who's back this week, Harry McFive. Oh, okay. oh Harry McFive. Yeah. Also apparently back from a virus. Yeah, yeah. Him. apparently. Yeah. Yeah. CTE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah. Speaking of CTE, Tom Barris is in concussion protocols. Ooh. Has also met with Sam Mitchell. Yes. Which is very, very interesting. We'll chat with Eliza Riley about that mm-hmm. one later. Gary Rowan obviously in the protocols too, given he got knocked out by North Melbourne on the weekend. He just loves, oh, sorry, he doesn't love getting knocked out, but he gets knocked it's out like all the, the time. the third Gary one yeah. in his last two years. Yeah, yeah that's an good. accidental head knock, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. And last year was the clash with Jezza, wasn't it? Yeah, he's, yeah. all of his have just been so unlucky. So yeah, very unlucky. No, no good for, for Gaz. Speaking of unlucky, Sam Taylor <laughs> and his busted nut. Uh, he's back this week and he's wearing specially designed padded underpants I've not to seen help his nut. There you go. Seriously. It probably, is it like a, uh, it's a, a cyclist? It's you like know a those cyclists? Gel, no, it's not like the padding on the seat. It's like a gel-based <laughs> Can thing. Can you stop that, doing your hands like that? Just to protect <laughs> the nut. That's just, that's just a bit weird. Um, 
good on him. I'm happy he's back. I'm yeah, glad he's back. As long as he's comfy, that's all. That's all we want. Every dude cringes when they think of Sam Taylor's injury. Yeah, yeah. and had it under. Yeah, so let's actually good. move on. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of injuries, uh, Jordan Ridley got got a contract extension at the start of the year with a history of injury issues. He's oh. injured again. Yeah, he l- always gets injured. It's the third time this year. Oh. Mm, he was injured last year too with yeah. concussion. Mm. Well. Yeah, but this is three weeks of the hip flexor injury. That's not great. Uh, no, really. Timing it well for how Essendon are going at the moment. Uh, before we get into the big pit piece here, uh, Brendan Ellis has retired effective this morning. Yes. He's had a lot of issues this year. He got a couple of flags at Richmond and then was like, I'm going to take the money. Yeah, he had 251 so, games, which I think is a bit over, his, I swear, the last couple of years. He hasn't two been premierships? Very, two premierships? I, 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 I thought he had one. Three. I thought he had one. I thought oh. it was three. I thought oh. it was three and then I Googled and it was two, but two, unless okay. that's wrong. Maybe he, did, he did move in the Premiership player, yeah. Brandon Ellis. There you go. Yeah. 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 That works. But yeah, I wouldn't leave him as a star, but he was a solid contributor. 21 yeah, disposes a game. Solid role player. Pretty yeah. good tackler and things like that. Good role player. It's one of those dudes you look back. It's going to be like Harry Cunningham at the end of his career. He played 250 games. Also, nice. Dimmer's Sean love Alley. child. Dimmer just <laughs> always played him even if he was out of form. Dimmer. And then he obviously played him over to Goldcrest. No, he didn't. Brandon Ellis left. Oh, yeah. He, Brandon was, Ellis has been there for five years. Stats, he would, guys. He would have, sorry, he would have been off a list, I think. That's what I meant this to say. This is the last year of his contract this year. Yeah, I reckon yeah. he would have been off if uh, yeah. Yeah, if Dim wasn't there. That's what I'm trying to say. Leo's a happy guy this morning because Connor Nash has signed a five-year extension oh. with the Hawk. Don't mind the that. Hawk. Yeah, very happy. Five, probably a bit overs, but I'd rather him stay than go to another club. So, yeah. Ah, he's, a, he's a good player. He's, yeah. he's been consistent this Speaking year. Speaking of role players, he's defensively in the midfield, holds us together. Yep. Awesome. Nathan Fife lost his appeal last night at the tribunal. It was basically what Isaac Heaney did, but yeah. because it happened in Perth, no one really noticed. That's the first time I think anyone's called him Nathan. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's the Ross line when, you, when you're disappointed with him, so I'm disappointed Nathan. that he got suspended for <laughs> Nathan. Nathan. Well, it sounds like I'm angry, boys. Did you, yeah. did you guys watch ever watch that? Chris watch that. No. Nathan? Oh, damn. No. That's, that's a good little reference that good some chat. people might get out there. It is good. I'm telling you, that is yeah, good, chat. good chat. <laughs> anyway, Nat Fife, yeah, probably deserved a week. You can't he hit punched someone. a dude in the yeah. face. You can't hit someone. Probably deserved more. It was lit. The only difference to the Heaney one was he had a closed hand than an open hand. But you hit a dude in the face, you should get a week off. It's like Jim probably doing right now with his two kids. They're probably what fighting. What do you think he's hitting him? No, they're probably <laughs> fighting amongst. Cool. The kids are fighting amongst each other. He's like, hey. He's like, I want a week off here. Yeah. He's like, stop <laughs> it. Yeah. That's like a five year well, sentence, actually, I think. He, he actually punched Stats Guy in the back of the head last week. That's why he's been Did up he? for a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I put, he's in jail now. HR yeah. violation. It's interesting you brought up. He's um, on a holiday. They hit the head, they should get a week. What about Michelini all over Nick Watson in the Malay and had his elbows yeah. around? Yeah. That was and that crazy. only got like a $1,000 fine. I think everyone saw that was like, how is he not going to? get a week. Yeah. Maybe it's because like Nick Watson's annoying and that and doesn't matter. I Nick think Watson tax. I yeah. like he's annoying, so he, you can hit him. I, I, I think you're allowed to hit Nick Watson. Yeah. Uh, and James are you allowed no, I'm not annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not. A, I, I could be annoyed, but I'm not a pest like Nick Watson. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, oh, well you got to be kicking goals, mate. Yeah, you. yeah, true. Like what goals are you kicking at the moment? <laughs> Just l- life everything goals. in life is beautiful at the moment. <laughs> I've been within the business though. Oh, oh come on! <laughs> We're here oh, to make money. Content stuff, goal. Oh, let's have a meeting after. I'll, 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 I'll take about an hour with all the goals that I'm kicking. Take so. thirty yeah. seconds. <laughs> Nada. Ah, uh, so we got to be slightly serious. Yes. Craig Kelly, Collingwood CEO, has allegedly been accused of racist and xenophobic comments. Mm, horrible. Came out in the papers yesterday. Collingwood then released a statement yesterday afternoon saying it was a former employee who has leveled these accusations against Craig Kelly. The These accusations have nothing to do why that former employee has left the business. Completely separate matters. The police have investigated it, found nothing to charge Craig Kelly with. There is obviously a difference between sort of something that's done that's been illegal and obviously something that's morally and ethically wrong as well. So this process will play out. It is putting football in a bad light once again, and it is not great. Well, it's putting Collingwood in a bad light. The amount of sort of these sort of cases they've had over the last, boy, just in my lifetime has been really bad. And and yeah, it's not a good good look. For it to be allegedly the CEO, it's not a great look. No. And hopefully if yeah. there is wrongdoing that has been found, punishment is swift. Yes, and which we'll find out, I reckon. It might, it might yeah. not be to the end of the season, but I think something will happen there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right, moving on to the midweek winner and loser of the week. We only have losers this week. <laughs> oh. And you know what? It's the fans. Yep. Why is it the fans, Leo? Double header. Which one? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which one? No, no, Friday night. Yeah, both. Yeah, Friday night. No, but Friday night is ridiculous, I think, because Friday night you've got every – like. Even people that don't support the team, most people, most Aussie fans su- support and watch that Friday night game. You want to know why I like waking up on Friday morning other than the fact that I'm alive and I'm awake? <laughs> no, that's, that's, I don't think about that when I wake footy. up. Footy. <laughs> Friday night yeah. footy. Exactly. Footy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now, I've got, now I can't, I, I've got to choose between two games. 
Yeah, what time are those games? It's 8.40, I think, the West Coast Eagles game. At least game. we get a bit of a gap. Game. Yeah, you're going to watch the first yeah. game and then chip into the other one for the second half. But this is also like, why not play it on Thursday? Exactly. Yep. There'd be, there'd be a big crowd. West Coast Gold Coast. West Coast could get a, a big crowd against Gold Coast at Optus Stadium if they're on Thursday as yep. well. Yep. I don't know. Bulldogs, Melbourne, that's probably not going to be a big crowd either way. Yeah, but it's also but like... Thursday uh, as well. It'll be work well. If the Dogs end up losing this game to the Melbourne, it's like, oh, that last three weeks meant nothing for the Dogs. Yeah. Or it's like they win and they kill Melbourne season if it, effectively. Gold Coast, mathematically, still a chance. So they need to go and pump West Coast and finally defeat the 28th parallel and win away from home. Yep. So... Is it to do with the weather? Because it's 15 degrees on Friday, but it's only 13 on Thursday. Because it's cold in Melbourne. <laughs> uh, we no, actually can't see the MCG at the moment because it's foggy. So maybe it's also the, two kicks away. So yeah, it's, it's two two booming left foot mark bays <laughs> kicks. A bit far. Yeah, and then also, of course, we've yelled about it Saturday night. Pendlebury's 400th going up against Swans and Port Adelaide. But yeah, yes, we'll get into more on Pendles 400th yeah. in our previous. We show will talk about the, yeah the yes, Pendles 400th 400. in the preview show, the team show. I can't wait for that tomorrow night. Yes. All right, let's get into some yeah nas, Richmond. Should they trade Shy Bolton and Liam Baker Ooh. to accelerate their rebuild? Yeah, no. Nah. Can I do a yes and a no? Nah? That's what I was going to say. There is two answers. I would say yeah to Baker. Yeah, because I don't yep. think he's that good. Bolton. Oh, that's a bit st stiff on Baker. I don't think that guy's good. known for his hot takes. Yeah, apparently. is he? Yeah, sometimes <laughs> lately. He's known for and then Bolton, fences. he's had a crap year, but I still think he's a good player. So I would, I would try and keep Bolton and try and build around him more than Baker. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Actually, oh, well, you're, you're having a go at me. No, I'm having a go at you for saying Baker's not a good player. Baker he's is okay. a good player. He's okay. He's okay. I, I think they've got to get the balance right between how they go about this rebuild. They've got to keep some experience, some I of their talent, but mm -hmm. Baker is worth something on the market. So right? shy Bolton. He is, but... Shy Bolton is better in a team that's going well rather than a rebuilding team because yeah. he has to try and do everything, whereas a bit more of a in a team scale. that's winning, he can have his 15 and 3, whereas right. he's needed for 25 and 2 in a yeah. bad team. I understand that, but I think at the end of the day, it's Shy Bolton. Like if if he if you can get him to believe in where you're going and build something with a young list, which He's they still don't so have, young. how old is he? They can, 25, that's my guess. They can develop something really special. Might take a bit of time. Yeah, 25. But, yeah, I think Baker should be the one to go before Bolton. I personally think both will go, to be honest. I, Ooh, would, trade okay. I would trade both of them because the thing is you could pr feasibly get four first-round picks for the both of them. Yeah, You've already yeah. got a first-round pick. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think could. they've already got two okay. first-round picks this year. They get one. They've got one. One. Okay, they've got five first-round picks in straight they away. They do need that because their youth is pretty average. And, we, and we'll talk mm. about this with Eliza Riley. So West Coast last year had one pick inside the top 30. Yeah, not one. great. Yeah, that's that's really so dumb. So we'll talk about really the dumb. potential for West Coast rebuild that they need to do later on with Eliza if, Riley. If Richmond trade both of them, are they going to get accused of tanking, or is that just a Hawthorne thing? No, that's <laughs> that's not a, that's not a tanking thing because also you look at what Hawthorne did when they moved on Mitchell Lewis Hodge. Mm. I I think this. No, I wouldn't I classify either, it as I tanking. Either of them. I think tanking. I think I'm it's just, just them yeah. going. All right, we need to get some. Picks. You need you need yeah. the rebuild to be up and going and moving yeah. before Tassie they, comes in. They're going to struggle regardless though. Yeah, next whether they years, keep yeah. them or not they'll be bottom three yeah. for a while I think another one this has just been thrown up because I don't know St Kilda looked awesome last week and it's yes. fun should the Saints consider trading a Max King oh, yeah nah I'm leaning to a yes here wow because so am I at and the I, start I of last year they didn't have him and they played some of their best football last year at the start of it mm -hmm. and now he's gone again and they're playing some pretty good football against Essendon. They were really good. I just think they're too king focused. Too like they just look at him too much. Like you got when you got Sharm in there, you got Sharm and you got Membry, you got Caminiti, Higgins, yeah. Butler, all these guys that can go through there. Even Steele and Marshall can go forward. King's there. They just go to him too much. I, I don't know. I think actually I'm going to take it back. I'm going to say nah. I don't think they should trade him. This is very much like when North traded Ben Brown, which I absolutely hate. No, 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 no. You mm. traded him because he but, wanted X amount of no, money. I know. You, he wanted X amount of money. North said no, and then he was injured and worth nothing. I know. Right. Yes. But all I'm saying is we got rid of Ben Brown. I don't even care if Ben Brown averages one goal a game. He is another target to help Larky. Similar to yeah. the likes of Membry. I don't know. They have been playing better, but I think in the long run, you need two big forwards rather than... That's like one because Charmin isn't a second forward. I think he's a third ben forward. Ben Brown's mistake was he knocked back yeah, a good a lot, contract he did, extension he did. and wanted more. Yes. Yeah. and then he got injured. Yeah, all I'm saying is I think yeah you, you still need two like big name forwards. Yeah, so no, I, that, I, that's I would fair. That's, I would keep. I'm him. probably a bit on the fence. I was leaning yes just to how they were, they've. Been but to be fair, they've him. been playing better without him. I'm a nah. You don't you don't trade a player like him. You don't trade a king. Mm. 
Also, Ben King's to- taking the bad power, so maybe when Max King comes back, yeah, he's going to be They good. both need to go pee in the Yarra. We know <laughs> yeah, this. exactly. Can a team from outside the top four win it this year? Yeah, nah. Yes, this, this is, the is year. This is the year. So even. Because it's, yeah, it's so even, you've got, who have you got? You've obviously got Sydney, uh, If dogs Brisbane finish friend. outside the top four, yep. they're one to watch. I think dogs, sure. Giants, Geelong... Yeah, yeah, outside the top four no. can all win it. Is what I, that's that's all yeah. I'm saying. Because I'm s- Sydney now are only what are they? Uh, six points off, yeah, eight points ahead. There's, the gap the is six. not as big. The gap is not as big as it used to be. And yeah, I think it can be really close. I stick with nah because if Sydney and Brisbane finish top two, it's a Sydney and Brisbane grand final. Yeah, Ooh. I think logically. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I just can't wait for Brisbane to cr- they'll crumble again. I just think because of how even it's been though. Like yeah. everyone's like Every- Hawthorne are like a game outside the top four mm. essentially. So like. It's very, very... And the dogs even. have been knocking off big teams. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, I think definitely is a chance. Should the Western Bulldogs go back to being Footscray forever and have that awesome kit with the Bulldog in the middle? Yeah, nah. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Nah. Is someone from Footscray? Why not? Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, I like the logo and like the old retro kit for sure, but I don't know. Western Bulldogs, they literally changed it so that it encapsulates the whole area, and I like that. And I like it's different. I like I like how you got Western Bulldogs, and it's, it's very different to all the other teams. So yeah, oh, foot's I don't mind. Cooler, yeah. sounds cooler. It's yeah. great. But they foot's they great. changed it's it for great. a reason, so I don't think they'll ever change it back because they they said they want also collars on shirts, they were, collars on shirts or yeah. singlets, sorry, and Gansies, yeah. whatever you want to call them. Yep. Will this year be the first year we have a t- team to win 14 games and miss the finals? Yeah, nah. I'm going to lean to nah. Yeah, nah for me. Uh, in mine, it was a yeah. Who? I'm pretty sure. It was either Hawks. It would have been Hawks. Hawks or Port. Hawks or Port. Yeah, well, oh, sorry, Hawks or Giants on mine. It's like eighth and ninth. I Jesus. think it'll, so, it'll depend if Hawthorne can beat one of Giants or Carlton because yes. then they'll if, probably get to 14. If, yeah, if Hawthorne and Port Adelaide lose this weekend, I don't think either of them are getting to 14. Is this, would yes, that be the yes. first year ever to have 14? I think In the it history is. of football, it if you've be, won 14 it, yeah. games, you've yeah, always made the top You probably eight. made top six. Yeah. And also in the... Hi- in the history of AFL, if you've had 16 wins, you've never not finished in the top four. Mm. Yeah, that could have both could happen. Yeah. That's nah, the, the six, top the 16 16's all right. I, no. Yeah, I th- I'll say yeah. I think it's definitely yep. possible this year. Uh, we got two Swans ones to finish off. No, oh. one of them's come from me. One of them's come from our boss Adam. Are the Swans cooked and not the real deal? Yeah, nah, <sighs> no. absolute nah. No. Uh, Absolute no. No, uh, no, I'm just joking. Let's also remember Collingwood this time last year, exact same problem. Yeah, exactly. You got to lose at some point. Uh, Fourteen to five. They other than the, other than last week where they got smashed. All the other games I were pref- really close. So if you lose yeah. this week, I'll, I'll be a little worried. I agree. Yeah. Who's this week? And Port, Port, Port and Port. Oh, you know. And finally, Port. did the Swans get it wrong at selection last week? Quickly, yeah, nah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Having Luke Parker as the sub and not picking an extra tall defender, absolutely. Yeah. Could have played a bit better. Though. And finally, have they stuffed up the Callum Mills reintegration into the team after his injury? Yeah. Nah. What is? Yeah. The, what what's is the re- re- what's the context there? So he obviously didn't play for the first eighteen yeah, rounds because yeah, his body was cooked. Mm-hmm. Sixteen rounds. Then he came back in for one week against North. Played on the wing. Played sixty percent game time. Pulled up sore and didn't play against Brisbane. Yep. Then last week is sitting at half forward flank and only plays 70% of game time. He's had 24 touches and two goals in yeah, two games. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? No influence. Two goals in two games? Yeah, but playing like 12 touches, no influence. Like mm-hmm. the North Melbourne goals, he just got a free Did kick. Did play any field. VFL? No. Mm. So Probably I, should have played VFL. I think I think they should have played him in VFL for two weeks on managed minutes because then if you're only having 10, 15 touches and you're scratchy, who cares? Mm. True. Yeah, I'll, so the, I'll, I'll agree with you. Game. They have yeah. stuffed it up, yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. we'll see what they do this weekend. We'll find out tomorrow night when we get to the team show. All right. Good year, Nars, boys. Good stuff. Yeah, well done. We've flown Thanks. through that. Let's get to good friend of the show out west, Eliza Riley, as we talk all things flag mental and the West Coast Eagles. All right. We are now joined by Code Sports Journalist, the Western Australian specialist. And as of last week, voter on the Glen Denning Adeline Allen medal for the Western Derby. Really? Huh? And safe to say, unlike the game earlier this year, it was nailed. Caleb Sarong winning it. It's friend of the show, Eliza Riley. Eliza, how are you? Hey, guys. I'm just glad I didn't stuff it up, to be honest. I was having a few heart flutters at three minutes time going, oh, my God, who am I going to give this three, two, one to? But luckily it became pretty evident in that last quarter and I didn't rob Harley Reid. So I don't have that on my conscience. Yeah, so exactly. quickly with that, this is actually interesting. So, like, how does that process go? Do they ring you or text you as soon as the final siren's gone? Because... Like, you could, obviously Caleb Sarong won it, but what happens if Andy Brayshaw kicked three goals in the last five minutes and you've submitted your votes? You're like, oh, we may have stuffed this up. It's, a, it's an awesome part, thing to be a part of, yeah. Yeah, honestly, like, I was freaking out a little <laughs> bit because we have sort of, like, when the result, we know who's going to win. They sort of want you to submit it with five minutes to go so they can go and tally it and stuff. 
Whereas if it was a closer game, I think they said you have until the final two or one minute to do it. <laughs> so it was five minutes to go and I was like, oh, I'm like, there's certain scattered are wrong. But luckily Andy didn't do <laughs> what you said and keep three goals in the last three minutes. But it was, yeah, it was honestly pretty hard to split those two. Um, but, yeah, basically just earlier in the week, the, the footy commission over here in WA rings the, the people they want to vote, um, try and get a print a TV and a radio person, and I was lucky enough to be chosen as the print person for this derby. And hopefully other fans think we got it right. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think definitely got it right. I, I think there's also like putting in your resume for the Norm Smith later in the year as Norm well. Smith, if you're free yeah. over there, like, yeah, look, I can do this because myself and the other two, I think it was Scott Cummings and Ryan Daniels, all votes the same. So good job, team. Yeah, yeah, they did well. Everyone needs a token female on their voting panel. So <laughs> I'll put my hand up. Yes, That's my yes, put your hand up. I yeah, like it. I'm, I'm a fan of that. All right, let's, let's rip in. Obviously, we had the derby last weekend or the derby. A uh, lot of feeling in this game for the... Let's be honest, the last few years they've been pretty boring, but this year it feels like the spice is back. It's back 100%, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I think the players agree as well. Um, Like speaking to Jordan Clark in the rooms after the game and he said that after what happened earlier this year, you know, the little brother wanted to hit back a little bit and not be bullied and shoved around by the Eagles. But funnily enough, the Dockers have been sort of the bigger brother that Ledger had flipped a little bit and they had won the five straight up until earlier this year when the Eagles caused that almighty boil over. And to be completely honest, like it's a fairly big call, but I reckon Harley Reid is a massive reason um, behind this Derby, this Derby rivalry being sparked again. And he's almost single-handedly made it um, one of the most watchable um, games this season because of what he's been able to do. Like you just honestly watch him walking in, warming up, and you go, oh, he he's switched on here. He wants to have a big game. And the Eagles um, sort of seem to rise to his level a little bit. So massive props to, to Harley Reid for injecting a bit of spice and fire back into this rivalry. But I love the beef. I was a big fan of it. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bring back the beef. We're all for that on bit AFL of old today. School, yeah. Yeah. No punches, but we love it when there's a bit of a mellow and there's a bit of a wrestle. Few, like 18 fines. It's always a bit of 15 fun. fines. Oh, 15 15 fines, 15 yeah, fines yeah. three suspensions, and somehow Harley Reid avoids it because Elliot Yo is he's either his uncle or his brother, whatever you want to just drag like, you're not getting in this one, That's son. Smart. They need Harley Reid, so just keep him out it's, of the fights. It is smart. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on Harley a little bit later. As we've got to touch on the winners. Flag Mantle, as they're now known on the show. <laughs> Uh, currently sitting pretty in third, a couple of points clear of Carlton, Fine, 12, yeah. 6, and 1. Now, a stat I came across yesterday, and it, I think it revolves around Freo's uptick in form, and tell me if I'm wrong, Eliza, but Andy Brayshaw has had the most score involvements in the last month across the competition. Is Has his uptick been another reason why Freo have seemingly found another gear? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like you think back to his 2020 season when he was voted um, AFL PA MVP. So his, his peers voted him in as the best player in the comp that year. And he was pretty high up in the Brownlow as well. That's sort of the benchmark we, we know of Andy Brayshaw. But the past two years, he's been dealing with a few niggles. Earlier this year, he had a bit of a knee sort of issue, um, we believe, that sort of um, restricted his form a little bit. He also had an ingrown toenail that actually got ripped off in a game. Oh. Um, he was walking around the room post game with a bloody toenail that they actually had to remove. So that apparently bloody hurt. And <laughs> Fair enough. Um, that, Run you know, sort of restricted his training a bit. Yeah, that would oh, not be fun. The yeah. pressure on that, it sucks. It was disgusting. I saw <laughs> it. I'm like, eyes have never been the same. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, he's he's had a few niggles. He's finally come through the other side of that now. Um, as you've seen, his form is pretty much back to, to what he was in 2022. He's sort of – he's not the Caleb Sarong in and under, um, you know, doing the hard stuff. He's sort of that next chain in the link who's getting the, the next possession and um, being able to generate scores and um, get it out of the stockages and sort of be that clean ball user the Dockers have um, desperately been – crying out for the past few seasons. So his form has definitely been a, a massive reason in this uptick. Uh, Agreed, yeah. Speaking of that, like with how Freo is going, and, and you sort of look at their list and just the team across the board, they are so well balanced. Um, Josh Tracy, would he be the most important player for this team, given when you look at how they set up, how powerful the lead-up 40 is, 
Uh, midfield, you know, you can shuffle them around. As we've seen, Alex Pierce out hasn't been a massive issue yet. Is the big kahuna, a.k.a. Dick Cyclone, the <laughs> most important player on this list given what he offers? He's absolutely in the conversation and I think you sort of measure that by, um, like you sort of touched on, if you take them out of the side, where are they going to be? Um, and I reckon if Josh Chasey was injured or suspended or whatnot, the Dockers um, would struggle to replace him up forward. I mean, Pat Voss has been in pretty good form in the waffle, but Tracy's just gone to another level this year and certainly the most improved player at Fremantle and probably up there in terms of most improved in the whole comp this season with what he's been able to do, the physicality he's provided, and he's also one of the most accurate kicks at goal in the competition. And we think about Fremantle being crying out for a consistent goal kicker Absolutely. pretty much since Pat yeah. retired, which is what, a good almost decade ago now. So... What he's been able to do has been absolutely incredible. Um, and I reckon that it's probably a bit of a um, battle between him and Hayden and Young as to who's um, the Dockers most important. But Ooh, yeah, Josh Tracy has a very, very, um, you know, sizable say in what the Dockers do any given weekend. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a big Kahuna guy. We need a most improved award in the AFL. Like. No, no one wants. Yeah, like no one wants I the think, most improved award. It's like, oh, you tried hard. Here you go. No. You're playing AFL. <laughs> You're a good player. I think most improved could be yeah. up there. That'd be fun. That'd be a bit of fun. That's good. Yeah, we've got our uh, retro kits, obviously, uh, if it's a lot of the teams. The Freo, the Anchors back, I think, is it this week, I'm pretty sure, which I love the uh, the old school red, green, the white, the purple. People used to go, oh, that's too many colors. I love it. I think it looks awesome. What are your thoughts on the retro kits? And uh, should it be a permanent feature, do you think? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and the fans love it as well. Like as soon as that merch comes out, they're lining up outside Freo HQ trying to get their hand on so some good, of it. Yeah. Honestly, it's a moneymaker that people <laughs> love the the retro and especially given the Dockers are celebrating their 30th year in the competition this year. Mm -hmm. Bringing back the inaugural jumper. Um, you know, it was people bagged it at the time, but I reckon with a bit of hindsight and a bit of um, sentimentality, it looks pretty cool yeah. when their players whip it out now. So um, the Dockers do retro around really well. I think they sort of embrace the, the sort of oddity of their existence a bit and being the only club with sort of um, purple in their jumper. They, they really um, try and make it a, a big thing each year and the fans love it. Yeah, it's one of the See, only kits I would get, yeah. This is it. Clubs, they're also like, I'm going to drop a new kit because why? They make money. It's a and they business. Look, they look good, yeah. Retro round is great. Like, I want to buy one of those 19, 1990s training jackets from Freo. Yeah. They look awesome because it's got the green in it. I, I'm a fan. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan. I think I think every team should do retro kits. I don't know why they're not. Yeah. Good idea. That's another one. Uh, we, we skipped over it. Alex Pierce obviously rebroke yes. his arm. Did he they make it. a bit of a balls up in rushing him back so quickly? To be honest, from what I understand, no. Um, it was always going to be um, at risk of re-fracturing it. Okay. Um, and no matter how much time they gave him, that risk was pretty much going to be the exact same. Um, and he was really obviously pushing to play against Hawthorne the week before in Tasmania, obviously, um, and almost got there with one less week than what they eventually gave him. So it honestly is just really unfortunate and Jack Darling from the Eagles um he was in a similar situation this time last year had that plate in his arm actually had the plate removed which probably indicates more of a risk and he's managed mm. to to get through almost a season now with not um refracturing that arm so it is honestly just really really bloody unlucky um but they hope that this second plate that's gone in now is going to provide even more stability there's always going to be that risk, just as if you do an ACL, you're at risk of doing the second one. Unfortunately, that's just the game. Um, but hopefully he gets back for the the end of the home away season, if not finals. Yeah. Finally on flag mantles, they are heading that's towards finals. Them. They're they're run home. Like they've got Essendon this weekend. Uh, I think it's at Marvel Stadium. Then they've got uh Geelong at home, GWS in Sydney, that's and it. Port Adelaide in the final round. How far can this team go? Are we buying into Flag Mantle? Are they the real deal? I am. Well, not to take anything away from Flag Mantle, but it's anyone's flag this year, isn't it? Yes. And the Dockers are sort of taking that approach a little bit about why not us? Um, you know, there's no one with all that Sydney were the clear runaway favourites and they've obviously fumbled the ball a little bit in the past few weeks. So the Dockers are very much of that mentality of, hey, we're right in the mix here. Let's give this a real hot crack and I think their destiny is in their own hands a little bit because we know for WA sides just how important it is to finish in the top two. Um, sides never want to flag from outside that top two in WA. So 
if the Dockers can um, somehow snag that second spot off Brisbane and get a home qualifying final, then absolutely everything's in their favour um, to, to have a real hot crack. But we know that, you know, on, on any given day as well, if a side has a good qualifying final like the Dockers did um, a few years ago in Geelong and sets up a home um, prelim final, that's all it takes to to be there the very point in the season. So destiny in their own hands, the top four finish is probably going to be pretty important given that they are, you know, coming from WA and trying to win a flag. It is so hard it's to hard, win yeah. a flag from outside yeah. the top four, especially with the travel burden of being in WA. So I think there's every given chance um, that they can feature pretty prominently in the back end of the season. Speaking of a team that won't be in the back end of this no, season, sadly. the West Coast Eagles. The new coach search is continuing, and obviously it's come out that they're finalising who they're going to look at as far as the selection goes. But what were the thoughts and vibes across West when Dean Cox basically came out and was like, nah, I'm good in Sydney. Like, that surprised we're, we're, me a bit, yeah. Young family, wife just opened yeah. a new business. If he wasn't West Coast legend Dean Cox and he was just Dean Cox who'd played at the Western Bulldogs, would West Coast have wanted him so badly? It's kind of um, a perfect storm a bit for the Eagles because generally when, you know, a coach is sacked, the, your instant thought is to go and look at the assistant coaches of the teams at the very top end of the ladder. Yep. So in that case, it was Dean Cox. It is Ashley Hansen at Carlton. Um, it is um, Jamie Graham, Jamie who's Graham, obviously yep. an ex-Eagle as well mm -hmm. um, at Fremantle. So it almost was this perfect storm a little bit in that the, the target Eagles, we probably thought they would have gone for just happens so to be former, you know, players of the club. But you, you're right in that if Dean Cox was any other, um, you know, played for any other club, it might not have been um, such a grand pursuit of him. Um, he would have been very much in calculations, but it is that added element, isn't it, of being a, you know, um, great of the club and what he did for the Eagles and his experience at Sydney and just how um, highly credentialed he is. That made it a bit of a bit of a shock, to be honest, and a bit of, a bit flattening that he didn't decide to pursue it. Yeah, fair enough. See, I personally, I, I know I'm a Swans fan, but I thought he was never going to go and do it because he looks very likely to be Fairly the next, wise, co yeah. next coach of the Swans as well. And also the young family part as well. It's like, it is a big move to go all the way back to Perth and you'd probably have to pay uh, a coach a lot of money as they have in the past to get him over there. But we have a look, um, obviously, what is it? Josh Carr said no as well, but Brent Montgomery's a name that's come out in the last few days. You've mentioned Ashley Hansen and Jamie Graham, but Daniel G in Syracuse. He comes up every coach. <laughs> I think he's actually a really good coach. At yeah. one yeah. point, he's, that dude's just got to get a job, but mm. this West Coast job does look to be a hard task, sort of like what Adam Uze is undertaking at the moment. Like, What's the vibes <laughs> and thoughts out of WA at the moment? Like, Who's framing as like an early favourite, shall we say? Favorite, yeah. Yeah, like, to be honest, I reckon the Eagles will try and cast a pretty wide net for this job and try and get as many people to, to apply and um, speak to them as possible um, because, as you said, it is going to be a really big undertaking. It's a really big decision for the future of the club and they want to make sure that um, they get the right person who can lead them out of this rebuild because that's going to be the key component. They need someone who's good at relationships, who's good at developing young kids and can really, um, you know, sort of lead the club out of what is a pretty dark era um, with a bit of pain to come, to be honest, with the likes of, you know, Elliot Yo and Jeremy McGovern sort of nearing the, the ends of their careers. So I think at this stage um, you probably are still looking at, you know, your Jamie Grahams, Ash Hansons and Montgomery's um, as sort of the, the top tier of untried assistants and Jen Secuza as well. We won't discount him. <laughs> Poor um, but if there was the sort of established um, AFL, you know, ex-coach who put his hand up, I think the Eagles would have to look at them pretty closely, knowing that it is going to be a pretty hard task and someone with that experience at the top level in the, in the hot seat would be a really good asset to have. But at the same time, um, I think... To, to hand the reins to someone who hasn't had that experience, who is a bit untried, 
might not be the, the worst thing either and could be a very viable option given um, what lies ahead for the Eagles. Well, Paul Ruse's name popped up randomly nah, the last done, couple of days. Is that old. just him looking to get some, you know, media time? Because that really can't be serious as he's been out of the game for so long. I don't reckon. No, nah, he was just in Perth for like a meeting or something. And then someone <laughs> yeah. saw him at a cafe and was like, oh, Paul Ruse in Perth. Like, saw him at a cafe. That's classic. It was honestly like something like that. And then he got asked about it and he was like, oh, no, I was just there for a meeting. Like, I would be shocked if he threw his hat in the ring. Yeah, he's just having a couple of tins in Northbridge. Uh, obviously, we've talked about this job's going to be hard for the new coach. Now, do you bottom this list out completely and uh, – because we see that there's still pain to come because obviously Tom Barras has met with Sam Mitchell apparently yesterday yeah, and you can that. tell us about that. But do you cash in if he leaves? And I know he's the golden boy and the captain, but he's probably the number one person with value in the club. Oscar Allen. No, we got him here. Yeah. Don't trade Oscar Do you Allen, look no. to trade if Barras leaves Oscar Allen as how, well? Because how dare you say that? last year, West Coast, we're rebuilding. They had one pick inside 30. No. Oscar Allen stays. Yeah. <laughs> he's, yeah. <laughs> Got that, Alex. He's a big guy. They love him. He's only said he wants to be an eagle for life. He's very ingrained in Perth and he loves the club. So I can't see him going unless the Eagles tapped him on the shoulder and said, hey, mate, for the good of the club, we really need some draft picks <laughs> in the door. Um, but I can't see that happening. I think it's probably a lot more um, viable and, um, you know, sort of realistic that, that Tom Brass is the one that they – put up on the trade table, try and get some value out of him because um, as much as he's been an incredible servant of the Eagles, um, he is the one who you can get probably the most for on their current list. He's, I think, 27, 28. Realistically, he's not going to be at the club for the next premiership tilt. So why not try and extract a bit of value out of him at the moment? And um, the Eagles also have you know, a few understudies and the likes of Harry Edwards, who's obviously played a bit of footy lately um, with McGovern out of the side. We all thought um, he was a bit of a question mark, but I thought he's been pretty solid in the past few weeks and has shown a fair bit. And Rhett Bazzo as well, who unfortunately has had a very interrupted season with groin issues. He um, is very highly rated internally as well. And the um, Eagles expect him to play a fair bit of senior footy, if not the back end of this season, going into next season as well. So it's not all doom and gloom if they do lose Barras and maybe pick up um, a Denver Granger Barras on the cheap Ooh. if they do, if he does head to Hawthorne. Mm. I do like I like that. Well, it's just actually. getting rid of a Barras for, for a Barras. Yeah, it makes it's sense. Granger, and it's an upgrade. What's, exactly. <laughs> same, same. Um, what is the chat out of Perth today with that Sam Mitchell has flown across to Perth to meet him? Like, Is, is it just sort of a resignation like, oh, yeah, we're, we're second last, yeah, we're probably going to lose him? Yeah, I think it is heading that way. Like there has been a fair bit of movement, hasn't there? And this is sort of the first um, really significant, um, you know, throw at the stumps that has been had in terms of actually meeting up with him. And there was a coffee a few weeks ago, apparently between Adrian Hickmon, who's obviously a, a assistant at the Hawks, um, and obviously spent a fair bit of time coaching Brass when he was at the Eagles during that premiership year, but. Um, for the senior coach to, to fly into Perth and meet with a senior player, that, that sort of tells you that things are heating up a little bit and Barras is seriously considering his future. Um, the thing is that Barras basically, um, from all reports, wants a restructure of his contract, wants a bit more money coming in the door if he was to stay at the Eagles, but um, West Coast have been burnt, as we know in the past, by giving out long, expensive contracts to to senior players and they may not be inclined to, to make that mistake again with someone who does present a fair bit of trade value. So as much as it would be to like disappointing to, to lose a premiership player and a, a key part of your club, I think the Eagles have to be pretty realistic here and think that um, if there is something to, to get out of it, this on the trade table, it's worth exploring. Yeah, I cool. think, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. got to try. I know the Swans had a big swing at him last year and he's said, oh, I want to be an Eagle forever. It's very funny to see how things change quickly. It is footy after all. Like I'm all, yeah, all for get the money young. or go for success, whatever you choose is, uh, which way you want to go. But let's get to Harley Reid because Ooh, this one's he's the favourite topic on this show. Last week, uh, you said it earlier in the show, he's uh, brought the spice back to the derby. 
He gave away five free kicks. He's a kid, but the Fremantle fans Booed him, yeah. have seemingly gone like just real into their emotions about this and are tweeting like a 37-year-old mother who's gone through a divorce. <laughs> like it is very funny to see that a 19-year-old has triggered Fremantle fans. Oh, it's so funny. Like he's the biggest antagonist and the Freo fans absolutely felt for it. And the Fremantle players. Like I thought. To be honest, like as much as he did roll them up and um, you know, try and get in their heads a little bit, like the Freeman players were fully going after him a little bit. And I was like, yeah, calm, guys, man. you're getting sucked into a nineteen year old. Exactly. Yeah. Like, he he got in their heads, he did well. He did. Um and he wasn't taking a backward step. Like he probably started it, but then Freo started um ripping into him more so than he was giving it back. But it did go both ways. I loved it. I thought it was pretty um you know, entertaining to watch and a sign of, um, you know, just how sort of much Harley wants to, to try and transform this club and um, give them a bit of an identity again. So um, he did cross the line a few times. I think he gave away five free kicks. If he can <laughs> get that down to sort of one to two and not have as much of a yeah, negative impact, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. probably helps a little bit. Like he did give away a free kick to... Sukowski, which resulted in the goal. So if he can take that out of his game and just focus on the tough little cheeky stuff, <laughs> then I reckon he'll be in a, in a better place. I, like yeah, that. I did enjoy that also the ex-Fremantle greats that were commentating on the game across radio and TV just instantly triggered by this kid going, you know what, I'm going to have a crack at Brayshaw and Sarong. And they gave it back, so it was fantastic. But like you said, it's good. five free kicks, a bit of, you know, sit down with him on the sun about – this is great. Everyone's going to stop giving in. away free kicks. Everyone will be tuned into the derbies, though. So we absolutely love that. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I love it. All right, Eliza, before we let you go, sort of final predictions or any shocks to come for the Eagles as far as the end of the season yeah. is concerned? Can they pick off another game? They've, they've, they've got Gold Coast this weekend, so they're probably certainties. Do I? <laughs> don't know about that. Well, we know that the Suns haven't won away this year True, yeah. um, and the Eagles have played well at home. So if you add those two factors up, then you'd think that the Eagles have a red-hot crack against Gold Coast on, on Friday night. Um, and I think that's going to be the key, just trying to get something out of this last month of the season. And, you know, they had an honourable loss on the weekend just gone, but fans don't want honourable losses anymore. They want wins. They want something to, to celebrate in this back half of the year. So I reckon they're a pretty good chance against the Suns on Friday night. And if not, um, there's a few more games after that to try and pitch one more. Bring it on. I love it. All right. That's Eliza Riley. Big thank you to jumping in on the show today. I'm sure when Flag Mantle are charging towards their first flag during the finals, we'll have you back back on on, the show. Also, with AFLW coming up, I've already hit you up about that. So can't wait to get into that as well. But thanks for joining in, Eliza. Thanks, guys. Huge shout out to friend of the show, Eliza Riley. That was awesome. Tom Barras is going off to Hawthorne, so we're going to have to control Leo for the rest of the show. But you know what? We better get into some Coleman Brownlow and some rising star updates because Stats Guy wants to talk about North. Let's start with the Coleman because I'm in charge. I love my power forwards. It's all about the goal kickers. Charlie Kerr, nine out. 56 oh. goals because that's what Jim rolled with last year. He did. Can I say Hogan, 53. One of the Kings, 46. <laughs> Harry McFive, <laughs> 44. And Jake the Snake, Waterman, 44. This is a two-horse race. Two-horse yeah. race. I'm, I'm still backing Jesse Hogan. I said this four weeks ago. I don't mind that. I so said did you. it first. Yeah, so I, yeah, I know. Thank you. Yeah, I think you missed one of the shows when I said it as well. Yeah. So, I, yeah, Hogan has been in amazing form. I, I think he can catch him. It's yeah. only three goals. In- interesting. Uh, How's he going to go against Hawthorne's defense yeah, this week? Well, Leo? Hogan has Hawthorne's defense. Kerno has Hawthorne's defense the week after. Yeah. And watching all on the West weekend. There's a West Coast or North West Coast game in there for Carlton as well. Yes, yes. Charlie's and dish. a St Kilda game too, I think. Yeah, but that, they're very stingy. Well, they got Darcy Moore this he week He averages too. two goals a game, Jesse Hogan, against Torques. Yes. So averages, which is like okay. Averages two goals a game at Monica as well. Our defense okay. has been much improved. In the first quarter against Adelaide, we were shaky against the big tools Adelaide had. Tex, Thrillthorpe, Fogarty, yeah. Himmelberg. It was a threat. And I was Him a little bit Berkeley. worried. Oh, they You're looked, still tall. They looked threatening, and we were playing in front, no pressure on the ball carrier, and it got out the back a few times. Yep. So if that does happen for the Giants or Carlton, they could both be in for big days. It'd just be interesting to see. That might actually decide it, how they go against us, to be honest. Yep. Also, Hogan yeah. needs to uh, calm down being hungry. Did you see that Harvey Thomas one? 
Get out the way, you no, idiot. No, give the handball. Give the handball. No, you get out the way for someone running into goal. This, this you... is him being a small man this defending is, yeah. a small no, man. I, and I this is you goals. being a tall man defending a no, tall man. No, but it's man. also because he came down. It's you look up and you give the handball. Jesse yeah. Hogan was facing the wrong way. No, he if... wasn't. He was looking right at him. <laughs> no, give, is it, is it... That's guy, you give the handball and do the team things. You, the is... team thing is get out of the way because the guy's he running into the He couldn't get out of the way because of the way the positioning was. Give the handball. Okay, hang on, hang on. Sorry to interrupt you. Again, honestly, interrupt. This is bad. Sa- say if he didn't give the handball, just kick it over him. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, but Jesse. So Jesse Hogan was running in the way of him because he was being a flog and trying to <laughs> think about the Coleman. <laughs> if I did that, if someone invited him, he'd be dragged. As Jesse Hogan, no, he was being a flog. That's all I'm saying. You're saying you dragged Jesse Hogan. Hundred percent. <laughs> He, he ran in the way. drop him. He was standing in the point. Would you drop Jesse Hogan? No, obviously okay. not. <laughs> he's oh, not. you say yes. Like, get, get the best up. forward. No, but I just hate. He was standing in the points, and then he's moved into the goal square. You hungry? <laughs> just, just get out the way. Anyway. All right, all right. That's all I'm saying. Righto, stats guy. I just don't. I don't, don't like him. Let us know in the comments <laughs> who you agree with. Uh, Charlie Kerno has Collingwood this weekend. He has an awesome record against Collingwood Ooh, as well. Wow. They, they've been really bad, Collingwood. Yeah, free kick, Charlie. Could be in effect this weekend because yes. Collingwood fans love nothing else than abusing Charlie Kerr now when he gets free kicks. So we'll see this weekend. Ben King just can't kick straight. He kicked 12 straight behinds or missed 12 straight yeah, shots. Yeah, he's been on like 45, 46 yeah. for ages. Yeah, can't yeah. kick straight. Mackay and Waterman too far back. This is a two-horse race. All right. The Brownlow. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting week last weekend. Lockie Neal probably picks up one or two votes. Mm-hmm. Yep. You'd say Zorko would get predictors. three. Nick Dacos would have absolutely gotten three against yep. Richmond. Yeah. I don't think Cripps would have got a no. vote on uh, Friday night. Let me check the predictor, but I don't think so either. Yeah. Uh, I reckon Errol Goulden may have snuck one. Mm. All the predictors say none. You can't get smashed by that much, I don't reckon. I agree yeah, that he was really good. She's yeah. all you, you know. Yeah, I agree that he was it really good. It does happen. But yeah. They, I, yeah, I don't know. It Max one, one maybe. Max yeah. one. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so I'm thinking that. So not a great week for everyone bar Nick Dacos. Yeah, Bont wouldn't even get three. Bont wouldn't have got a no. vote. No, yeah, Which, that's touches. why the dogs are playing well, because they're not but relying on Sometimes them. they do throw a cheeky vote or two nah, Bont's it'd be, it'd be Jamara, Jamara Trelaw, and then one of probably Matty Roberts or Errol. Mm. Lucky Neil. Maybe Liam got Jones. three on, uh, nah. on here. He got um, voted MVP by Damien Barrett in, the, in his Who? show. Damien Barrett? No, I said Liam Jones. <laughs> Liam Jones. Liam Jones. Sorry, yeah. 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 You got to invoke. I think it was Liam Jones. You've got yeah, to invoke right. the good bloke rule, and he's an anti-vaxxer, so no votes. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I agree. Paul Levi Casbolt. Yeah, you, can Levi you be eligible? Hasn't got a kick like this year. Can you be ineligible as an anti-vaxxer? Like, if it does that count as like suspension? suspension. We probably shouldn't get into that on no. this podcast. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see this weekend. So obviously, you've got Crips going up against Dacos. You know, yep, in the Collingwood yep. Bo- Collingwood Carlton game. Yep. Uh, Errol at the Adelaide Oval up against. Well, Rosie, the Hornet, Zach yep. Butters. Mm, that's a good matchup. You still got Warner, who, who's coming off a career worse last week. Uh, who do the Lions are playing? Um, Lions are playing St Kilda, so there's every chance there's a tag still. coming. I was going to say, would Willem Drew go to Golden? Maybe he hasn't been tagged. Not though, like got the endurance. Willem yeah, Drew, that's though. the problem. Drew was on Crips. Yeah, he was. Week. Yeah, okay. Yeah, see, Crips is more explosive, but Errol just mm. does repeats. Yeah, I don't know. Drew's more inside, so yeah. maybe you'd go to one of your tougher players. Yeah, so probably to Warner or Heaney. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. So that'll be interesting to see. So that's pr- sort of the top four. What's the predictor's top five at the moment? Like, so no, got, Anderson wouldn't have got uh, a vote Cripps no. first, Lockie Neal. Lockie Neal. So Cripps by uh, no, I don't one. Care, I don't care who's what the thing oh. is. Give us the top five. Yeah, Cripps, Minus Neal, Heaney. Dacos, Gould, and Merritt. 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 Wouldn't have got a vote on the weekend. Yeah, he, he's... The last month has been very average. Yeah. So I... Merritt is still pretty short in the odds no. as well, surprising. I'd be having Gordon ahead of Merritt. Merritt, for me, I don't think Cripps has got, got this, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I said it last time. I, I think Neil. I think Neil. Neil. Even though... I'm charging Errol. I can't still on. stand yeah. saying that Lockie Neil's If he good. does have a strong, like, yeah, four month. weeks, yeah. yeah, definitely. Very interesting. All right, Rising Star stats, guys. Time to shine, because the thing North oh, Melbourne love doing is winning a Rising Stars, but not football games. Well, until two weeks ago, I thought George Wardler had it in the bag. Oh, but I don't he, know about he, in the bag, but... Well, the odds even suggested that. And then the odds have swayed towards... Dempsey this now. is very, um, uh, what is it, uh, reactive, this market, because it is, everyone yeah. forgets two. How many kicks did Ollie Dempsey have against the Western Bulldogs? Uh, two. Yep. He had yeah. two kicks against how the Western Bulldogs. How many did Jezza have, though? He had, he had, he had one ball. kick. Oh, one kick. One even kick, four handballs. So there you are. So that's what I mean. It's reactive. He has a good game against North Melbourne, but the week before, he was absolutely yeah. horrendous. Mm. I think the Warlord has been fantastic. Mm-hmm. See, reactive. Matty Roberts, rising star. <laughs> oh, yeah. has, he has, has been great, to be fair. Has two good games, but yeah, it... For me, it's. I still think it's Wardlaw. Yeah, I agree. I think Dempsey. Ooh. I know a lot of people think Dempsey, Dempsey yeah. but I think Wardlaw equally does have his off games as well. Uh, he's yeah, had, he does. I, I love. I just think Dempsey's just like 
No, like, um, he, high IQ, very smart player. Like does enough. He keeps three like, goals on the weekend. In terms of them matching up against each other, he had uh, w- uh, Dempsey had eighteen goals. Oh, sorry, eighteen goals, eighteen disposals, <laughs> three goals. Yeah, three goals. Jeez, he's a kick. very just he's a sneaky player. Isn't and Ward, he, Dempsey? Wardlaw like, had twenty two disposals, three clearances. Not not bad as yeah. well. But I'd say Dempsey won that matchup. I'm still leading towards Wardlaw overall. Yeah, well, that, we'll I have to wait well. Can I make a case for the wizard? He, he's if honestly the top five. Could have kicked straight. Yeah, he'd be winning. You reckon he'd be winning? If he, uh, if, if he, he in the convo, if he, he hadn't kicked straight. like what twelve goals, twenty or whatever he's kicked, yeah. if he's kicked twenty two goals, don't 10. mention the ones out in the full. But that's what I mean. Yeah. Like if he's kicked thirty goals, yeah, he's yeah. probably winning it. I, st- I think he's going to be all, all Australian next season. That's like you think Nick Watson. I, that's a I, big. Call. I was talking about it with a mate because someone commented he should be all Australian this year. I said that's a joke. If he kicks straight, Nick Watson will be all Australian. The Wiz. Okay, I'm not he, even joking. If he kicks straight this year, he probably has 25 goals. That's not yeah, enough. No, but that's not enough for all Australia. I know, but 30 you need, plus. You need to get 40. Or 30 40. 40. Next year he could he could do that. You reckon he could get 40 next yeah. year? <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, why not, mate? That's a social clip if I've ever seen one. I can't, yeah, I can't right. say that. I was still thinking yeah, about it for okay. a while. There you go. All right. That'll do here on the AFL Today show for today. Uh, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow for the team show, yes. Thursday night spectacular. Myself, Leo, and Marcus. Thank you. Next nice. week, yeah. I don't think I've that ever happened. No, it hasn't <laughs> ever. I'm actually excited for the chaos. <laughs> yeah, what's going to happen? It's going to be lots of fighting. Well, Three yeah. hours, Joe. <laughs> Let's it's go. It's funny because Sydney, Sydney hates Essendon. Hawthorne hates Essendon yeah. and Essendon hates themselves. So. <laughs> Marcus could be sad on the show tomorrow. Uh, yeah, as Essendon, it's the first uh, Essendon supporter we've had on the show, so that's going to be great. I hope, he's, I hope he's angry. Yeah. 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 He will so, be. so thanks to you two for jumping on the show today. Thank of you. Of course, big shout out to good friend Eliza Riley doing Legend. a great job as always. Remember, smash a like across the socials to see us doing all this awesome footy stuff, filling in everything throughout you. We have a very, very fun thing coming your way in the next couple of weeks. Oh. We won't tell you exactly nice what balls. it is, but we'll slowly drip it out across the social feed. Stats guy may be kicking a football with his hero. So that's going to be yep. interesting to see. Of course, Mark Facebook, Instagram, X, Threads, TikTok, of course, YouTube, like and subscribe there. Get around the podcast as well. Please give us a review. Thumbs up, five stars, a like. Say you hate Stats guys. I don't know. Is that a... Uh, UK, that? mate. UK Kentucky. Kid. Get around Kentucky. Uh, University of Kentucky. Stat, Beautiful. Stats guy is a rooster Beautiful part all. of the world. Uh, anyway, get around him like... Flag mantle getting around their first ever flag in 2024. That's a big call. <laughs> Make sure you check out Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, and go to punters.com.au. We're doing punters previews this week. No hot or tickets, still on hiatus for another three weeks. But anyway, that's it. We will catch you later in the week. Well, tomorrow for more AFL Today. Till then, look after yourself. And remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.